Today we're taking a detailed look at the Breitling B50 cockpit, which is part of the professional range. This is a super quartz thermocompensated 46 millimeter solid titanium uh, with, in this case, a um, DLC coating. Uh, it's on a rubber strap and this is a behemoth of a watch. This is a, um, it's a horological giant. Uh, not just in the form, um, it is 46 mil as I said, but it was much larger than that and it, it kind of doesn't make any excuses for it either. Uh, this is a large wristwatches. So it's large in form, but it's also large in functionality too. There's a lot going on under the hood of the Breitling B50 cockpit. That's why this video is unashamedly going to be slightly longer, but I'm trying to um, give you an overall feel of both the form and the functionality of this watch. So anybody out there who's got a passing interest in the B50 and, and this range from Breitling, hopefully we'll get something from this video. I will try to keep the pace up because uh, I know people, you know, just don't want to be bored out of the trees. So I will do my best to do that. But you know the score if you're a regular watcher to the channel. You know that I have been known to have a word or two in addition to maybe what is sometimes required. Uh, as I'm doing right now for that matter. So let's get started. This is a um, very comfortable watch. It's quite light because uh, of the titanium construction. Uh, and as I mentioned before, it does have a, it's called a DLC coating. It's like a, other people may uh, liken it to a PVD coating. It's where you put like a ceramic or carbon in this case, kind of on top of metal uh, and it gives it a kind of a ceramic feel that's the best way of describing it uh, so the watch is kept light but is incredibly sturdy and incredibly tactile it's got a very different feel to a steel wristwatch and it's hard to pick that up in the pictures but maybe you can just kind of glimpse that that might be the case just by looking at the pictures on screen now. Um, I will point out, I've tried to boost the light level a little bit, um, which might give the video a slightly washed out appearance. But the reason why I've done that is because with this being a black watch, it's difficult sometimes to pick out the features and the lines. So I did want to give you the best possible chance of, of kind of getting a good look at the watch. Um, so let's deal with the form first. I've mentioned it's 46 mil. It was probably slightly larger than that. Uh, it doesn't make any excuses for it. It's quite a thick watch as well, but it um, it's very comfortable to wear. So it's very comfortable on the wrist um, and you know it's there. It's got a good heft to it. So you do know that you're wearing it but not usually are you in any discomfort or, um, you know, you're not kind of thinking, oh, this is, is not really great to wear. So um, it's worth just bearing in mind that if you've got smaller wrists, then this watch looks obviously even bigger. The propensity for wearing smaller watches is well underway now. It's very much the fashion of the day. However, there'll always be a place for these larger watches and this watch is no exception to that. So um, it's on this rubber strap at the moment, which does feature a, uh, it's a bit, a bit tight there. Um, it does feature some micro adjustment under here, but the watch is a real head turner. It's got such a wrist presence. It's got a nice detailed face uh, and dial. Uh, it's clear, it's easy to read, and then it's got these two LCD screens um, which also give the watch a very cool appearance, especially when we turn the backlight on, which we'll do shortly. But um, that gives you an idea of how the watch wears uh, and what it looks like on my average size wrists. So I would say I have an average size wrist. Um, maybe if you push me on it, slightly smaller than average. Um, so there's, in, in my opinion, it, it's big, but 
it, you know, it looks fine. Um, I like larger watches anyway, so to me, I'm like, that, that looks quite good. So, um, uh, and at the end of the day, <laughs> if you're happy with it, then that's all that matters. So, um, taking a closer look at the back, again, this PVD or DLC coating is incredible because like it, you can re there's a real tactile feel to the watch itself. So when you hold the watch, um, it, it's just interesting. It's just like, I don't know how to describe it. It feels so well built and well constructed, but um, it's got a nice kind of ceramic feel to it. Uh, and the relief bit on the back is real, you know, you can really feel the, uh, the the quality of of the the back and and all aspects of the watch, so it's got a signed Breitling crown, uh, the main crown there, and then it's got two kind of oval push pieces, so not quite the circular, but they add to the kind of more modern style and appearance of this watch. They're, they're certainly not going for vintage here; they're going straight down the modern digital kind of uh it's kind of an analog digital mashup isn't it uh, and that is reflected in cockpit design so a lot of uh, the cockpits in modern planes are now digital uh, they do still have analog backups though um, and this watch kind of marries both of that so in in form at least it looks similar to some of the instruments that you see inside cockpits on aircraft. That's by no coincidence because at the end of the day that's how Breitling made their name, if you like, back in the day by making cockpit instrumentation. Um, in addition to wristwatches, it must be said, they, they were making wristwatches before planes existed. Um, so it's something they kind of moved into uh, in the invention of the aircraft and as the uh, uh, aircraft evolved. So a little bit more on the form of this magnificent watch. It's got three hands, hours, minutes, seconds. You can see the tick of the hand due to it being this thermal compensated quartz movement, which is a first for Breitling in that it is classed as in-house. So it isn't manufactured by ETA and then given to Breitling under licence. Um, this is a, it's manufactured off-site, it's not made at Breitling, but it is then exclusively used by Breitling, so it's not available in any other watch. Uh, and in that sense, uh, Breitling have classed it as in-house. They were completely involved with the development of this uh, each step of the way. Um, you know, it's, it's not just been a, a what can we use off the shelf, it has been a a full-on development process to, to make the B50 uh, and Breitling proudly described this as an in-house quartz movement. Quartz has got a reputation with watch collectors, let's face it. Most watch collectors, or many watch collectors, let me be fairer, many watch collectors kind of uh, turn their noses up at quartz um, because Apart from the crisis, apart from the dark days back in the 70s and 80s where, uh, you know, watch making in general was decimated by the introduction of quartz and a lot of the technical skills and, and mechanical skills were nearly lost um, because everybody kind of went to quartz. Um, so it's understandable to see why many people don't, they're not huge fans of the quartz watches and that, and of course you have to change the battery. So Breitling have done something different with regard to that. This is a rechargeable watch. So in the box you get kind of a magnetic, almost like a, a, a MagSafe adapter that clips onto the, this isn't like a helium escapement valve. And when it clips on, you can then charge the watch through your wall socket. It's got a lithium polymer battery in, and the battery is good for about one month to five months, roughly speaking, anywhere between that. If you're using the watch and the functions all the time, you've got the alarm set to maximum, you've got the backlight set to maximum, you're using a couple of timers, you're using all of the features of the watch, 
then you're probably going to get about 20 odd days to a month out of a single charge. Most users who aren't and are just kind of um, using the features on an ad hoc basis, maybe activating the backlight a couple of times a day, they're probably going to see closer to four months use out of a single charge. Charging takes about an hour to two hours and um, once it's charged, you're good to go. You can take the cable with you. It's a USB cable, so it can either plug into a USB adapter and into your wall socket, or you can plug it into your laptop. Um, there have been some issues with the early generations of this watch, and I do want to address those later on. It's a shame because it's probably affected the sales of the B50 Connected. Uh, anybody who's researched this watch before buying, and let's face it, most people do these days, they're going to come across certain issues that would be uh, worrying for people who are about to purchase such an expensive wristwatch. But nonetheless, uh, I will cover those issues, but separately from both form and functionality. I want to um, keep that. If you're interested in that, it'll be at the end of the video anyway, my thoughts on that. So looking again at the dial, we can see there the uh, cutouts for the digital displays. It does have applied indices at 3, 6 and 9. The Breitling winged logo, so the older style logo, um, is applied at the 12 o'clock position, which in my opinion is a lovely touch as this is a kind of um, pilot's watch. Uh, the other numbers are uh, painted with Superluminova, as are the hands. So you can read this watch at night if you don't want to uh, deploy the um, digital display and the backlight, you don't have to. Uh, the only thing I would say about the look of this watch, the only thing that slightly irks me is the They've clipped 10 o'clock, so if you see 10, you can kind of, it looks more like 1C. Um, and that's because the cutout for the digital display just edges its way over the number 10. And that's quite a bold design decision because none of the other numbers on the dial are affected in the same way. And it's a bit like the FedEx logo. Once you see the arrow in the FedEx logo, you can never unsee it. So um, it's a little bit like that with this watch. You, you see the 10 o'clock um, and I, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not a deal breaker for me. I, I've got a lot of Breitlings where numbers are clipped by dials and things like that. It really doesn't bother me that much, but it's just something to be aware of. And, um, you know, it's better to look at it now uh, than maybe after you've got the watch and some people are like, I really don't like that. So have a good look. Have a look at the number 10. Is it a deal breaker? Probably not, but there you go. It's there nonetheless. So um, those are painted on, those numerical uh, markers. And it's got a chapter ring that's probably, I don't know, maybe 45 degree chapter ring rather than a 90 degree sheer case. So around the outside of the dial, uh, it doesn't just go to the edge of the watch case and then go up to the bezel. It's it's uh, angled at about 45 degrees. I love that look. Co very, very common on watches like Audemars Piguet, and the Royal Oaks and watches like that. They often feature that. And Breitling themselves often um, opt in for that. It's quite a, it's, I wouldn't say it's old fashioned, but it, the more modern watches don't have it. That, that's definitely true. Um, they've gone back to this sheer uh, 90 degree climb up from the uh, dial to the um, sapphire crystal at the back there. Um, and like I say, some people, it might be a bit Casio watches because uh, I think they do it quite a bit as well. Uh, again, some people love it, some people hate it. No offence to Casio watches, by the way. I love them. Hoping to get one. For the uh, hoping to get a G-Shock or two for my collection further down the line. So please uh, take no offence at that. I absolutely love Casio watches. So um, this, uh, like I said, that probably covers most of the aesthetical appearance of the watch. The bezel's bi-directional. It's got a compass 
a sun compass functionality. So it's got the cardinal directions, north, east, south, west, and then a numerical markers for the degrees in between. Uh, and this allows you to use this watch as a sun compass. Um, many watches have that form and function, uh, that functionality. It's not unique to Breitling in any way, um, but it's there nonetheless. Makes sense on a pilot's watch if you're trying to navigate, and I think you'd probably be using uh, a couple of other instruments before you'd revert to this. But um, nonetheless, it is there, and um, you know the watch is better for it. Let me put it that way. Um, so yeah, it really is a good looking watch, isn't it? It's ready for business. This is a kind of ready for action, rugged look. The strap is rubber, it's thick, uh, it wears comfortable, but straight away you are, you know, in the territory of uh, kind of a hard wearing watch. Uh, and it certainly feels that way, the titanium build quality and everything, as you'd expect from a luxury watch brand, is magnificent and I've already said how tactile and fabulous the watch feels in the hand so there's certainly a lot going for the watch as far as the design uh, looks it is an absolutely tremendous looking watch um, it really is a head turner uh, and I love this about Breitling I've got to say I know some people don't they think they're too blingy or they think they're too this or that or the other and I know some of the Breitling range now are coming away from this look they're kind of retreating back from this pilot kind of utility watch and they're going for slightly more dressy slightly more vintage uh, and fair play for doing it I absolutely love the new watches too but I think for me as a collector there'll always be a place for watches like this and I do hope that uh, well I, I know that Breitling will um, you know they honour the heritage from which they came and, and they're very proud of it rightly so so there'll always be a place for a, a little nod here and there to watches such as the B50 cockpit and others beside so um, just looking at the clasp uh, the buckle here this uh, is a it's standard design that this is available in steel uh, as well as this kind of titanium um, it has got micro adjustment on this side here so you can push in and then alter the uh, length uh, across the length of, of the buckle itself so it gives you maybe an extra coming on for a centimeter or so I never thought I'd ever find a use for those but actually because I wear my watches quite tight um, obviously in summer when your wrist expands um, you find that watches that fitted perfectly in winter don't fit anymore in summer uh, that's what I'm telling myself anyway I'm not telling myself that it's too much food um, so uh, you can adjust the watch uh, the bracelet the, the strap there the only thing to bear in mind with this night mission variant is that obviously once you shorten the strap here you actually cut it off um, and that means you cannot then go back you are committed to the strap being at the length to which you cut it um, for some people uh, they might prefer a more traditional kind of uh, tongue and buckle kind of strap or uh, even a bracelet I'll probably get a bracelet for this as well so that I've got both at some point so there we go that's uh, probably enough about the um, form the look of the watch I want to spend a little bit of time looking at how this actually works so uh, the watch itself uh, works it's quite intuitive you've got the two digital displays and then the analog display uh, around the outside as well. The digital displays are, they can be switched off if you want to eke extra battery life out, but they're kind of always on in this kind of darkened state, if you like, which again suits the watch so well, doesn't it? Um, so you can see, it's hard to see today indoors, um, but the digital displays are both on and uh, they are backlit as well. So if you want to, see what's on the displays you just push the crown in and then they duly light up and what a fantastic uh, kind of look 
you get when you light them up. They really does uh, kind of very bright, uh, very easy to read and looks amazing. Um, and I'd say it's this cockpit look. That's one of the things that attracted me to this watch is it really has got kind of a cockpit look and I love it about it. So um, a real big fan of that. Probably the standout feature for me is that backlit dual LCD. It looks amazing. Um, the hands obviously reflect the time precisely. So you can see, there we go, it's just ticked over. Um, um, so the hands reflect the, the time on the watch precisely. However, as you can see, sometimes they do get in the way. So if you double click, double press on the, um, on the crown there, then it parks the hands out of the way. So that if you're using watch functions, mainly on the uh, dual digital displays, the hands aren't in the way. The watch is still keeping correct time. Uh, to get it back, just double press again and away you go, the hands go back to where they should. You also have a rather nifty function. You change functions on the watch by rotating the crown. But as you can see, when I'm doing it, it's coming up locked. Um, and this is quite nice. So a triple press on the crown locks the watch to the function that you've currently got it on, in this case, time and date. Um, so to unlock the watch, it's a triple press. Triple press the lock, triple press to unlock. So if you've got it on a timer and you want the, the timer, for example, to be the focus, then start your timer going, triple press the crown, and then you know that when you uh, trigger the backlight or even glance at the watch, it's going to be still showing you the, the timer that you've set up. So let's unlock the watch like that, and then you can cycle through the various for, uh, features of the watch. Uh, I'm going to try and show you some of these. I can't show you them all, but listen to that tone. It's not the loudest tone. There are watches with louder tones, but it is um, pretty loud, pretty loud. And it's pretty good. You can switch off the beeps. If you don't want the beeps, switch them off. But I like the beeps. I like the fact that this watch has got a little bit of retro digital in it. And I quite like that. I bought it as an Annie digital watch. And I like the fact that when you turn the crown, that it beeps. I don't have the hour chimes on because I don't live in the 1980s. However, I do like it that when I'm altering the those things that there's some kind of audio feedback. So um, I've set it here to UTC, Universal Time Control. Um, this is how you actually set the watch up. Um, so I think it's locked, yeah. So um, UTC, when you get the watch, you don't set it to your local time zone, you set it to UTC first as the base time. And then after that, you there's two separate time zones. There's time one and time two. Um, and then, hang on, I'll keep the hands. Um, <clears throat> so if you go to time, that shows you the primary time zone. But if you cycle through, you will see that there's a time two function as well. And that can be set to... Uh, any time zone that you want, plus or minus UTC. So it's quite easy to set up. The hardest bit is actually setting up the hands to match the digital time. Um, it took me ages to do it because I kept trying to set the hands to the digital time. But when you read the instructions more carefully, the instructions say set it to the time that's displayed at the bottom. And, and, and it's something like 4 or 5 p.m. So even if you're setting the watch up at like half 7 at night, uh, you actually set the hands to 5 and, and stuff like that. And then when you push the crown back in, 
they then go to the correct time. So that caught me out for at least an hour and a half when I was trying to set this watch up. And it's just something to be aware of. So uh, let's take a look then at some of the other functions. I keep doing that, apologies, I'm trying to... Uh, so we've got an alarm. Uh, a chronometer, which works as it should. Uh, seconds, hundredths of seconds at the top. And then whenever you use any of the timing functions, the seconds hand reflects an analog readout of the timing function. So if you're using this as a count up timer, as I am here, then this seconds hand reflects the time elapsed since I started the stopwatch. And if I stop, the stopwatch then you'll see that the seconds hand stops as well and if I restart it then there it goes. This does have a flyback function as well um, but um, I'm just trying to work out what I'm doing here. So you've got there we've paused it at 37 and then when I unpause it it then jumps forward to uh, the correct time where it's at. So it's like a lap timer so let me try and demonstrate that in a better way. So let's let the second hand just pass through there. Keep putting the backlight on as well. So I lap time, split time, and it's I'm writing this down or doing whatever I need to do, 107. And then when I restart it, it jumps to where it needs to be. So um, it's a handy little function. And like I said, I really have thought about everything to that degree with this watch. Um, what I will say as well, if I just stop that reset, there we go. What I will say is that if you're using a countdown timer, then the seconds hand goes backwards. So if you're looking at your watch and the seconds hand, you appear to be doing a Martin McFly. Um, oh no, he went forward, didn't he? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. If it's going backwards, your watch isn't broke. It's on a timer and it's a countdown timer. Um, so it's just worth bearing that in mind that on count up, your second hand is going to go forward. On count down, your second hand is going to go backward. Um, what else have we got? Um, this this one, um, this it, it adds flight legs. So if you're in the air, and you need to add flight legs to a journey so that you know when you took off, when you got to cruising altitude, uh, things like that, then that's what this function is. Um, and then you have, uh, I don't use that, uh, but you have countdown, count up, C, D, C, U, C, L, R. Um, so it says countdown stop, so to alter any of these settings, you pull the crown out and then it's saying count down and then you press that and then you set how, how many days you want it to count down, how many hours you want it to count down, how many minutes you want it to count down. So let's do a one minute count down. Oh no, in fact, let's do zero minutes. This is quite a nice function because you can do seconds as well. So let's do a 30 second countdown and then the watch will count up. So once you're happy, push that in and then we're ready to go. So we start the timer and off it goes. It counts down for 30 seconds. This is our MET mission elapsed time. So it's counting down. Um, and what happens is once it gets to zero, it will then count up. Um, now, I'm showing you this because when it gets to 10, 9, it does those beeps. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and then up. So there we go. So um, this is almost like the NASA clocks, isn't it, where they have a countdown and then after T minus 0, it counts up to T plus. And it's called a mission elapsed timer. This watch features one and it features a 90 day, 99 day actually, I think, 
uh, timer. So if I let's start off. Um, so countdown is there. I'm tr tr trying to uh, alter the. Let's see. 99 days so it can go it can elapse actually from t minus 99 days to t plus 99 days so it can do 198 days can measure but half of that is um half of that is counting up half of its counting down uh looking what else we've got there uh, standard timers, second time zone, which I've already mentioned, UTC, you set the watch to that. This is how you alter all the settings on the settings menu, and you can, this is where you modify the hands so that they match up with the time, things like that. You alter the beeps, you alter the strength of the backlight. Um, actually, you do that separately, but um, that's all on, um, on the settings menu. And then Battery tells you how much battery power is left, 97% in this case. And then you're back to the first function, the time function. Um, this watch is a magnificent watch because it showcases just what can be achieved with luxury watches. It's a gamble for Breitling, but Breitling, as I was saying, that Breitling are not risk averse. They're prepared to try different things with different watches. Take a look at the Breitling Emergency, the watch that features a, a personal locator beacon. Um, so if you deploy it, then it actually sends a message into space to the satellites and you get rescued. This is a serious business um, kind of watch manufacturer. And the B50 is yet another example of a watch brand that is just creating watches that are real kind of stalwarts in their field. This is an aviator's watch, a pilot's watch. You know, I mean, I'm not a pilot. I've not bought it because I'm a pilot. Bought it because I like the look of the thing. Will I use half the functions? Probably not. Will I use a timer every now and again? Probably. So it's just worth kind of measuring all this up. And, and I think that that's why a lot of people do like the Breitling brand, because they, they offer something that's considerably um, different than a lot of other luxury watch manufacturers. Of course, the other manufacturers, they'll give you a chronometer and a chronograph function. Well, the chronograph watch with a chronometer function. They'll do that for you. That's fine. But you know, there's only a few watches that start to uh, do the kind of things that Breitling do with watches like the B50. The B55 variant of the professional watch is different in that it uh, connects to your smartphone. So I suppose you could call it a smart watch. Uh, and you can do a lot of the alterations rather than using the pushers. You can do the alterations on your phone. It doesn't have the same design and in my opinion it doesn't look quite as good as this one. It looks a bit more dated um, but nonetheless the form and functionality if you like it then it's definitely a watch for you. Uh, just in closing this video I want to talk about some of the problems that Breitling have had with this watch um, and it's kind of you know I'm, I'm always careful when I'm, when I'm about to do what I'm going to do because it would be really unfair to, to say on a video that's out in the public domain that every single person who's bought this watch has had problems with it because that is simply not the case. But it must be said that some users with the early versions of this particular watch, the B50 cockpit, did encounter problems with charging the watch where the watch would sometimes brick uh, and have to go back to Breitling and, and have something replaced. So it's almost like something burned out on the inside during the charge process and it killed the watch. 
So there have been people who've had those issues. Um, and the other issue that some people had early on is they'd be rotating the crown to set something up and the crown would come out. The actual crown would come off the watch. Um, now, obviously, those functions are unintended, let's call them unintended features. Um, needless to say, Breitling have been very, very, very uh, quick to, uh, and sure to try and get these problems sorted back in, I think it was 2014, 2015, which is when they first released the B50 cockpit. Um, this is a, I think it's either a 2017 or a 2018 model. Um, and it must be said that uh, my watch doesn't have those issues. You're about to hear my cat using the litter tray, so apologies for that. Um, my cat always makes an appearance on these videos. Today it's off camera, but rest assured viewer, rest assured, my cat will always steal the show. Um, so anyway, um, trying to just push on uh, in all seriousness. The issues that were reported to Breitling, um, the charging issue, Breitling have redressed that by at least some kind of update to the software on the watch. Um, and um, I dare say there's been other changes as well. Um, but the, the Breitling straight away was like, right, let's get the, the battery problem sorted. And the quality control on some of the early crowns, I think that was just a case of, you know, something that was sorted uh, internally and then um, obviously probably not going to affect the later versions of the watch. So it's a shame because, and this is probably in closing, this watch is such a good looking watch. And Breitling deserve to have a bona fide hit on their hands with this watch. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's got a lot of functions and, and it's, they've put a lot of hard work and energy in the Breitling DNA in this watch. And it is absolutely stunning. And it's a shame that there are these problems that undoubtedly will have damaged sales when it comes to the B50 Connected. It's a shame that some people will have been put off buying this watch uh, because of some of the reported issues that are dating back, uh, you know, four years. Um, is that fair? Well, probably, yeah, because people spend a lot of money on watches. And, um, you know, they, at the end of the day, you want a watch that's going to last you not just a couple of weeks or months or years, but you want a watch that's going to last you a lifetime. The age old thing about whether any digital watch can last a lifetime is still out there. But I'm pleased to say some of the Breitling early digital watches from the 1990s still run perfectly. People like Urban Gentry, who I think, I think, has he got an extra space or an aeronaut? I can't remember, but he's got a, a really nice 1990s Breitling with the same two displays on them and the watch runs great and it looks great he's got it on a nato strap so should you be put off well I, I only you can answer that i personally if i'm buying a watch then i'm buying a watch that's got a guarantee i know that i've got to be looked after if there was any problems but aside from that you know breitling's still selling these and they wouldn't do that if there was if these watches were so problematic and, and they hadn't been able to fix the issues then what company would continue to sell them the answer in my opinion the only logical answer is none so the fact that you can still buy these watches for now uh, the fact that you can still go out and buy them um, pretty much tells you what you need to know that you know you can buy this watch with the confidence that it's going to work as it should for a long time um, but you've always got that backup of knowing that you've got a guarantee with a watch as well and an international warranty so i did want to just cover that but i don't want the video to end on that so a note of reliability or issues because as i say that would not be fair to brightling who in the b50 cockpit have made what must be um one of the most uh, trendy and stylish certainly I love this DLC black um, 
it kind of it's called the DLC. It's this carbon, uh, almost like uh, vaporized carbon ceramic type finish to the watch, and it really is magnificent. Uh, I'm not sure I I, I like the um, standard titanium version quite as much, but hey ho, that's why I bought this one. Um, the like I say, it is an amazingly good looking watch. Uh, it wears well, it's big, uh, it's brash, it's bold, um, you know, it's a, a talking point, um, even if it's just because of the um, the fact that it is a pilot's watch and unashamedly a pilot's watch too. This is a watch that is always going to catch people's eyes. There's always going to be kind of watch collectors and, and other watch enthusiasts who see the value in a timepiece such as this. And in that sense, Breitling have to be commended and watch collectors can go out and buy a really, really interesting timepiece that, that's going to be a worthy addition to anybody's collection who's into this type of watch. That's it from me for now. Apologies, I know the video is a little bit longer, but you can't skip through stuff with a watch like this. If you've got questions or comments, why not include them below? Uh, I'd be happy to help if I can. But just to say the manual is available online. If you search Breitling, just do Google search Breitling B50 manual, then you can read through the manual at any time. And please, if you have enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I've got loads more on Breitling, a couple more interesting Breitling pieces, including an, an emergency, it must be said. Got a Breitling emergency review video on the channel as well. So there's plenty to go at and plenty more to come in the future. But for now, from me, Paul, from Word On Watches, I'll see you soon.